Hi, my name is Lawrence Buat. I'm here with Sensory Sumo. I'm an occupational therapist, and today we're going to talk about a sensory diet. So what is a sensory diet? So a sensory diet is a list of activities that you give your child in order to keep them in a regulated state. The regulated state can also be called the just right state. So this is a list of activities to help your child throughout the day, and this could include activities such as jumping jacks, jumping on a therapy ball, uh, doing yoga positions, or even just walking outside or going for a run. So these lists of activities help your child regulate themselves in order to help activate their nervous system so that they feel right inside their own bodies. Because a lot of the times when our kids are having big movements or when they're making a lot of noises, when they're having a lot of behaviors, it's not because they want to do these things, it's because their body uh, needs that movement and needs that input. So the sensory diet is divided into uh, three types of activities. There's the tactile activity. It has to do with our hands and how we feel in the skin, our sense of touch. And there's the proprioceptive um, list of activities, which includes deep pressure and a lot of heavy work. Uh, it tells the, the, the brain mirror body is in relation to the space that we're operating in. And then finally, we also have the vestibular sense and that helps us with our balance and it helps us uh, stay uh, upright when we're walking or stay upright when we're on the swing. So uh, I'd highly recommend you talk to an occupational therapist in order to create a good sensory diet that's consistent with your child's needs. Um, when you see an occupational therapist, they will give an assessment, a standardized assessment, and those assessments could include a sensory profile too or a sensory integration practice test. And this just gives a therapist a standardized assessment to help them determine what kind of what kind of activities they want to be able to give your child and they'll help modify it as they implement the strategy. Um, they'll normally start it in the clinic at first so the child will get used to the uh, activity and then they'll slowly uh, teach the parents and also teach the teachers how to be able to do it because this has to be a part of their routine and that's what makes the sensory diet super effective. So it's more of a proactive rather than a reactive approach. A lot of the times we tell our students to take a break when they're already dysregulated, when they're already acting out. And uh, this is seen in a negative connotation. A lot of the times when you ask the student to um, take a break, they see it in a negative light because they only get prompted to do it when the teacher sees that they're not being a part of the group. So uh, if you're able to do this diet and then proactively have them take a break before they even do something that's, uh, that's that you don't want them to do, um, then they'll be more likely to accept these breaks. And it's, it's a lot better for them because they understand how to keep their bodies in check. And it's really important for uh, us as parents, as clinicians, and as teachers to be able to understand where our kid is. And it's the just right um, um, condition and state. We want them to feel comfortable in their own skins before we even ask them to do work. Why do we do these breaks? Why do we do these diets? It's not because we want them not to participate in school, but we want them to address the main need. If you're looking at it as a pyramid and you compare it to the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the most important need is to feel safe and giving their body the input to be able to feel regulated helps their body stay safe and stay regulated. So giving them the breaks that they need so that they would be, uh, that they would feel safe and they would feel comfortable in their own bodies is actually really helpful for them and being able to access the curriculum and being able to learn skills such as writing and being able to interact socially with their friends because when you feel comfortable, you're more likely to challenge yourself. You're more likely to do things that um, you haven't done before, new things, you're trying novel activities, but it's important for you also to feel safe when you're doing these activities. So that's why the sensory diet is so, so important. Um, there's different examples um, of activities. I'm just gonna run through a few and then I'm going to post a PDF video in the link below and there's gonna be a link below that you can check out the activities that Sensory Sumo has provided for, for you because we want this to be available and accessible for everyone out there. So let's go ahead and talk about like the tactile, some examples of tactile activity. So water play, uh, making, uh, playing with water beads um, are examples of that, or using wet washcloth to be able to get that tactile input, or being able to play with slime or putty gives that kind of sensory input that their brain needs and helps them explore the environment. 
also going out and dumb playing with picking up frogs or, or collecting uh, leaves that are, those are some good natural sensory plays that you could uh, provide for your child. So that's a good example of a tactile play that you can incorporate in your diet. And then the proprioceptive of heavy work, pretty much on the joints where they are um, uh, in relation to the space that they're operating. So you can have them push a, push a wagon or do some heavy work, or you can have, have them help with um, picking up books or, um, or sweeping or vacuuming. These are some good examples that you can do in your home or in the classroom to help them stay, regu stay regulated or um, have them um, hold the plank or do a yoga pose, do different activities. Now, yoga is a really cool activity because it also activates the vestibular system, which is our balance system, which is really good. So now and, uh, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the vestibular system. So a very good example of that would be swinging, uh, but there's also the uh, the body um, uh, wrap that you can use for your kid. It's also a proprioceptive input, but it also is in a way helping with balance, especially for standing up when you're putting it and then being able to lay down. It pretty much helps and keeps your body regulated and in, in space. Um, running and walking is also a good vestibular and also proprioceptive activity. So you incorporate this throughout the day and you mix this with uh, longer breaks, 10 minutes and shorter breaks, five minutes. But you wanna do this consistently throughout the day and see what works for your child. You may wanna start with more and then, and then taper down to having less, but you wanna give them the opportunity and explore different kinds of breaks. I'm gonna uh, write down a list so that you can see all the different kinds of breaks that would be available for your child. And this is such a good activity and this is such a good thing to add into your child's schedule because you can incorporate this into your daily routine. For example, when they first wake up in the morning, you can incorporate that tactile input immediately by having them wash their face with a warm washcloth. It's a good tactile input and it helps them wake up. And then brushing their teeth, it's another tactile input that you can do, but it has to be consistent. And then having them do a yoga activity in the morning to kind of get their brains going. And then at school, when they get there, having, um, recommending the teachers or their classroom to go for a walk. I think these are some good examples. And then taking a yoga break, uh, you can use the Go Noodle platform. They have so many good yoga videos that are really good and kids really enjoy. Um, and you can just incorporate that throughout the day and then giving them slime, giving them fidgets, giving them crunchy food, whatever they need. Again, every child is different. That's why it's really important to uh, talk to your occupational therapist about this, your local OT. But if you don't have the time or if you wanna apply this immediately, you can do it. You can follow the tips that I'm gonna post here or you can listen to this video. That's why this video is here so you can start that. Or if you don't have access to an OT nearby, you can implement this. Uh, strategy and use a, diet, a sensory diet, but you want to be consistent. So you start with maybe five to seven breaks during the day or every hour. You want to be consistent with that and you want it to be the same break so that uh, you're creating that rhythm in your child's brain and also making sure that you have the same language that you're using for your child to tell, to help them understand where their bodies sit where their bodies are, if they're in the green zone or the yellow zone, unlike using the zones of regulation to give us a common language to use in order to help them realize where their, where their bodies are and being able to report that to their teachers and their parents and their therapists because it gives that common language and then they understand if their body's in the yellow zone that they need to take this kind of a break in order to go back into the green zone. Um, so there's different tools that you can use, but the zones of regulation in conjunction with the sensory diet, oh man, it's really good and it would be really helpful uh, for your child to keep them regulated, to keep them feeling safe uh, in order to play, in order to participate in school. Um, and I think this would be good to implement with your, with your child. Start it, do it, and then if you have any good testimonies about the sensory diet, feel free to comment below if you have any questions. Feel free to comment below or direct message us. Um, please like and share this video so that you can spread this more to more parents out there. Uh, I'm super thankful that you're joining us here today. Again, uh, I'm Lawrence. I'm a Tensory Sumo. And I hope to catch you during our next video.